negative thoughts in your mind that you aren't good enough, that you'll never be successful? If so, you're not alone. I've had those thoughts playing in my mind ever since I took the leap to become an entrepreneur. It's a dirty, dark secret that no one likes to talk about as the glamorization of becoming an entrepreneur is shown in the media. I realized that in order to succeed, I needed help. We all do. So I decided to go all in on myself, spending thousands of hours in the trenches, reading, joining groups, listening to podcasts, hiring coaches to develop a bulletproof morning routine for success. Join me on my journey as together we build our morning fire to ignite our lives as entrepreneurs. My name is Jeff Wickersham, and this is the Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs podcast. Welcome to the uh, to the show. I'm excited to have Jennifer Tozian on the show. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. It's so wonderful to be here. Absolutely. So let's get into uh, to state a little bit. We're going to do a little power breathing, power boom to get our energy level up. I know we're going to have a tremendous discussion and conversation. So let's go ahead and breathe in. Arms all the way up and out. Good. Another breath in. And out. Good. Final breath in. And out. Uh, all right. I'm going to count down three, two, one. We're going to yell boom at the top of our lungs in three, two, one, and boom. boom. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get to, uh, I know our energy is just going to be fantastic today. So let's get right into it. So I eat, sleep, and breathe morning habits, rituals, and routines. What are a few things you do in the morning that set you down that path towards success? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so morning is really such a powerful time for all of us because it, it allows us to prepave our day. It allows us to set our intention and our vibration for the day. And so morning is really powerful and it's so much more than just getting you know, a cup of coffee and breakfast and running out the door. So I do a meditation, but before I do that, I do go walking for an hour every day um, because it's really important to move and to be in nature and just just to get out of your head for a while because unresistance thought is so important. When we don't have any resistance thought and we're just looking at birds and leaves and trees and, and the, the river, um, you're allowing, it's almost a meditation in itself. And so that's something that I really put a, a priority on. But even before I do that, Jeff, I created an app called Subliminal Vision Boards. And so what that is, is it's a, it's a creative space to create unlimited vision boards with it, depending upon what it is that you want to attract or manifest or you know vibrate with, to align yourself with. So right when I wake up in the morning, I wake up to my dreams every day. So I set the notification setting on the app and that wakes me up every morning. And so I wake up to my gratitude board where I look at it for five minutes. I hear myself saying all the things that I'm grateful for and the things that I'm grateful for that are coming. Um, I do a health board as well that keeps me focused and in line that makes me in the excitement energy of what I want to do for exercising and eating better. Um, and then I also do an abundance board too. So for me, it's really about setting your intention on your day through visualization, through movement, and then also through meditation. Love it. And I, I do love the, you know, it's important to move, right? And I always tell folks that if you're, you're struggling on what to do from an exercise perspective, and it's first thing in the morning, to your point, what you, you alluded to, just go out for, for a walk and, and get out in, in nature and also do it without looking at a phone, right? Taking, taking the moment, taking the, the birds chirping, the sun rising, whatever time you, you get up, that's so powerful to get out and, and do that. And I, I know we're going to get in a little bit later to, to your app. I'm excited to, to explore that and the you know, amazing thing that, that you put together. So love those habits and rituals from a morning perspective. Can you share a little bit about your journey as an entrepreneur Kind of, I, I know we have shared offline uh, uh, previously, right? We're, we're very connected in some things that have happened very similar in our lives that have sparked some things. So could you share your journey a little bit and, and frame it up for everyone? 
Absolutely. Um, so I was raised, like many of us, in a in a very high um, high resistant, low frequency childhood. I'll say with a lot of trauma, emotional abuse, and depression. And so I think it's really interesting because as children, we almost don't know anything better than what is. So that's the life I lived really for about 18 years was living in this, literally you could cut the energy with a knife type of home life um, where I was neglected and I was having to basically raise my parents and raise my sister and raise myself in the process. Um, and, but I didn't really have a chance to really focus on me. And when I was released out of my home life when I was 18, I was homeless for a few months as well. Um, but once I got out on my feet, I started really looking into self-help books and, and self-development because I had this feeling inside of me that I had this new beginning, this new chance for me to, to live differently, to feel differently. I didn't have to go by what my parents acted like and believed in their perspectives. I could choose something better for me. I could literally create my own world, but I don't really know how to do that. So I started looking into the self-development section on, you know, with Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay and, um, you know, all these different wonderful teachers and healed a lot with them, honestly. But one of the main common denominators was to visualize. And so it would say, you know, close your eyes and visualize that you're walking in a garden and you meet your future self and everything like that. And I literally would close my eyes and I would see darkness. Mm -hmm. um, and I could not see any images in my eyes. So I always thought that I just wasn't enlightened enough or uh, evolved enough like they were and that someday something would just snap in me and I would reach that level of enlightenment and I'd be able to visualize like, most people can in this world. Well, what happened is, is that I started delving into vision boards because of this, because it was really the only way for me to visualize, to actually see images of the future. Um, and so I really love that idea, but because they were so big and so bulky and time consuming and limited, I just, I stopped doing them. And what I ended up doing, unfortunately, because of the, um, not being able to to stay on that path of doing the vision boards is that I stopped doing them all together mm -hmm. and it forced me to stay focusing on what what is instead of being able to imagine what can be or what you want to be. So kind of like you, Jeff, in 2014, my father passed over and it was very sudden. He he died of an abdominal aneurysm. And it really shook my life, honestly. It was very sudden. And I was already out of alignment. I was overweight. I was overpaid, underworked. Wait, un overworked, underpaid. You know, I mean, like everyone else is. And I was living in the desert and I love the ocean. So I was already out of alignment. And when this happened, my father passed. He was my best friend. And it was literally like, um, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. I flew into a huge depression. Um, I just went numb. It was just too much for me. But what happened a few months after he passed is something miraculous. Really, I woke up one morning and I literally felt so antsy inside of me. I, I told my husband, we have to go create. We have to go do a vision board. I, I, don't, I want to live a better life now. I, I want to be happy again. I know that we are eternal beings. I know my father's watching and he wants me to be in the best health and the best happiness that I can be. And so I, I want to, I want to get out of this numbness feeling mm -hmm. and start creating a life again. You know, like we were talking about death sometimes puts a spotlight on your own life. And that's what happened to me. I started reflecting and not liking what I was seeing really. Um, we get so used to this autopilot and this comfort zone that we're in, and we just live day after day and week and then years. And before you know it, it's decades and you're looking back and you go, wow, I didn't even, I don't even know what I've done or what I've changed in those years. I just, they just went like this and I just kept doing the same day over and over again. So that's what we did. We went and got the big poster board. We went and got all the magazines. We came home. 
I started going through the magazines. They were like 80% ads. Didn't make any sense. And then I couldn't find one picture that matched. And then I started cutting through the affirmations and they look like ransom notes. And I just said, no, this is just, we have evolved. This isn't right. This doesn't feel the same like it used to. So long story short, what happened is, is that um, six months of the day after my father passed, we went to lunch, we honored my father. And on the way home, my husband was driving and I was flipping through Facebook on my, my phone. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I came across this this pulse that my girlfriend had done of the traditional vision board. She was showing it up all excited, but something really connected with me. And I zoned deep, deep into that image. And all of a sudden this wave of heat came over me. Everything turned super bright. And I heard screaming in my ears, combine the two, combine the two. Now I didn't know what that meant, except that months before this had happened, because a vision board didn't work anymore, I started looking into the mind mm -hmm. and I thought there has to be a better way. So that's when I learned about my condition called aphantasia um, and also the power of the subconscious mind. And so when that moment happened, when it said combine the two, combine the two, I knew instinctively what that meant. And I yelled at my husband, combine the two, combine the two. But I told him, listen, visualization has evolved. Our souls have evolved, but vision boards, they're outdated. And the subconscious runs 95% and controls everything that we do from the minute that we're born. It's that old pattern, that old um, comfort zone and autopilot, and it's going to win every single time. What if we took these two powerhouses, combined them, made it an app because everyone's on their phone, and mm -hmm. we'll call it subliminal vision boards love it love the love the story and love how you got more in alignment and you knew what it was that you you wanted to create so a couple couple of questions for let's say somebody that's listening in and is discovering this for the first time right where the power of the subconscious mind and, and how 95 percent of what we do on a daily basis is is driven through that so you said something you know looking at what is currently going on in our lives versus the future? And why is it so important to visualize the future and, and see that in, in, our, uh, in our minds? Yeah, absolutely. It's so important. Uh, honestly, visualization is the key, is one of the huge keys to manifesting. Because if you're just focusing on what is, then you're gonna get more of what is. See, we're magnetic energy light beings. And, it sounds very sciencey, but and it is honestly, but it's very simple at the same time. We simply vibrate at a certain frequency through our thoughts and emotions and our actions. And so whatever we put our focus and tension on, whatever we talk more about and think more about and see and hear, we're going to actually start creating this momentum of energy and this frequency that we start emitting out to the universe. Okay. And through the law of attraction, what happens is, is that wherever we're vibrating at, whatever our thoughts are and our emotions are, there's certain frequencies and vibration levels to that. So if you're vibrating in a very high frequency of expectation, not expectation, but excitement for what's coming, imagine that you already have it and what that's going to feel like, then what happens is that your frequency starts rising to the level of that which is. And when that happens, then you're in alignment with what it is that you want. And then you start seeing that in your reality more. You start seeing it. You start attracting it in. Because everything is energy, Jeff. Everything, the phone you're on, the computer you're on, at some level, if you take it down to the microscopic level, past the atom, what you will see, and I have seen this, is this, is this moving, this moving flare of energy, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's everything. Everything is vibrating and revolving and expanding. We're, our senses are limiting us to what we call a wall uh, and a hardness and a solidity. But the fact is, is that everything is energy and everything is moving. So when you visualize something, 
then what you're doing is, is you're literally becoming that. You're, you're putting focus and tension and energy onto that. And when you do that, you're going to attract that into your life. Gotcha. Makes sense. And, and you know, the, the reticular activating system, RAS, right, is, is we get bombarded by so many different bits and pieces of information on a daily basis. I just read the other day in a, uh, in a book by, by Jim Quick, Limitless, that in one day now we get bombarded with more information or knowledge than the average person did in their lifetime in like wow. four, in the 1400s. So mm -hmm. just think about how the, the information that we're getting and we're bombarded with is, is overloading our mind. So to your point, if you don't open up your subconscious mind to seeing those things, Mm -hmm. It's going to it's going to filter them out, right? You're you're not going to to see them. You're going to stay in the in the present tense, which is is so uh, so incredibly powerful. Yes, and also on that note, because of the reticular, uh, what, I'm sorry, I'll say that one more time. The reticular Re reticular activating system. The activating RRI. system. From what it's I a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, so now that, um, but from what I understand, that also is sort of the part of our brain that wants us to be right. So what happens with this pattern of thinking in our subconscious is that the more that these thoughts happen and the more that we put attention to it and emotion to it, they become a belief. And it's a belief about money, about abundance, about self-worth, about what work is, about everything. We all have these certain beliefs that we have picked up from our parents, from their parents. It's a, it's literally an ancestral chain of beliefs and perspectives that, that we have within us. And so what happens with the subconscious is that it wants to be right. It wants to protect us. So when we have a belief system and we keep talking about that one perspective of that belief system, well, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to attract a circumstance or a person that is in alignment with what we're saying. And if it is in alignment with our subconscious belief of um, the rich people are rude, let's say, and you meet someone that's rich and rude, then what you're doing is you're basically you're connecting those two things together and you're basically solidifying that yes see i'm right it's not good to have money because i don't want to look rude right and that works for every belief system in the subconscious yeah it's it's crazy and i i, I know to your point so much of what we adopt we adopt to when we're children at a very young age so we don't know what is right or what is wrong or Many times we're interpreting it a certain way that we don't have the maturity level to actually know that that's correct or incorrect. We don't we don't ask the questions and then we hardwire it internally as a belief. And then it's that thought pattern that plays in our minds over and over again as as we reach you know adulthood and, and it continually plays in our minds and, and holds us back from what we truly, truly want and desire. Exactly. It's just not an alignment, right? So we're different souls than we were when we were five. We've evolved, we've expanded, we've learned. Um, and so it's doesn't it's it's sort of like your five year old mindset and belief system is running the person that you are now as an adult. And so when you want to start something new and exciting in your life, a new habit, exercise, eating, writing that book, whatever it is, when your consciousness and your soul of your adultness now wants to do something, if your subconscious has this old negative belief about that from when you, you know, when you had brought that in, adopted it from when you were little or what your parents thought about authors or whatever it is, if it's not in alignment, it's going to protect you and it's going to start sending you ideas and emotions that are going to stop you from writing that book. Let's say it's going to, it's going to start telling you things like you can't do that. Remember your dad tried to write a book and he failed and authors just aren't any good or what? So all of a sudden you don't have the time. You don't know how you don't, you're not worthy of it. 
all these things are going to come in from your subconscious. It's that little voice in you. And pretty soon it's going to win because it literally has decades of momentum over this amazing spark inside of you that says, I'm going to do this for the world. And for me, it's, it doesn't matter because you've got decades of momentum and energy that's going to come in within about two weeks and say, no, you're not. No, you can't. No, you won't. And then sure enough, you don't. So that's the real power of the subconscious. It's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It literally records everything that is or isn't good or bad. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't know it like that. It just, it just records it. And then the, what energies and what em, em experiences and emotions that you put towards certain things is what creates that belief system. And pretty soon the subconscious program of all these different beliefs are your autopilot are your comfort zone basically it's who you are because it runs 95 percent and controls you so that's why it's so so powerful and so important to start reprogramming that old negative belief system and patterns and thoughts that are running your life today from when you were five or ten or fifteen or twenty it doesn't matter when it's attached in your brain. What matters is whether or not it's in alignment with your consciousness, with your passions, with your goals and your dreams and your purpose in this life. And if it isn't, if it's an old belief of against of what it is that you want, or you're hearing your mom's voice or your dad say something and it's, and it makes you feel bad and it's not in alignment with what you want then it needs to just be updated so that we can make that an alignment. Yeah, no, and I, 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 a couple of things I, I loved you said there were it's your five-year-old mind and beliefs that you're operating with now as an adult, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, th that's pretty powerful when you, you, you think of that at the basic level. You're operating as an adult with five-year-old beliefs. Mm-hmm. Right now, th that would cause me to stop and say, wait a second, how how is how is that and how do I fix it? And then two, the fact that if you're still operating with those five year old beliefs and you want something, the mind is going to stop you from getting it because it wants to keep you in alignment with those five year old beliefs. So mm -hmm. uh, two, two powerful, powerful pieces of, of value I, I thought you shared there. And and I'll tell you, you know, for, from your apps perspective, I downloaded, I'm, I'm using it and uh, have had some good, good experiences already only using it three times. And when you see these images and, and you hear your voice and, and it's, I know it's a, a five minute, uh, you know, practice that you you go through I've already saw more of those out in the in the world and and you're just priming the system you're reprogramming so I, I definitely a, uh, am a, a huge fan and excited to see what else I can uh, I can use it for so tell everybody where they can find the app and then a little bit more about where they can find you Absolutely. So yes. Um, so the app is available right now, the Google Play Store for Android, iTunes Store for iOS. You can learn more about me and my app um, at www.subliminalvisionboards.com. And honestly, there's no templates to the app as well. This is a process that allows you to do visualization in a way that you've never done before. What I recommend is that you choose one area of your life at a time and create a vision board on that one area. And, and this allows you not to be distracted and, and intimidated by 25 other things, um, which creates a split energy, but also it allows you to delve within yourself, right? To tap into the power within you, to get excited, to start really thinking, okay, I may want that house, let's say, but the house isn't just an outside structure picture it's more and then when you start delving within that and you start looking into what do i what is the what does it take to make it a home right so that's the idea the idea of anything that you want any subliminal vision board that you create the idea is that you want to first of all choose the exact images that are going to resemble what it is that you want so Going the old way and going through magazines is insane because there's no way you're going to find that exact image. But with Google Images, which is what this app allows, you can find that exact image you want or so your own images. 
But the other thing too is being able to create a multi-sensory experience through visualization is so important and impactful because now what we've done is we've added a whole sound feature. So you can record your own voice saying what it is that you want. And when you hear yourself saying, I'm wonderful and I'm worthy and I love this and I'm, I'm excited for that, what happens is, is that you're starting to create new rewiring scripts in your brain. And when that happens, then that's your new self-talk. And then as you're looking at the images and you're feeling the image, the essence of the images you put on and the essence of the words you put on there, what happens is, is that you're creating new neural pathways in your brain that basically update and overwrite that old program into a new story of health and wealth and excitement and self-worth and self-love. And so that is really the basis of this app. And then of course, there's a feature called Subliminal Take 5, where for five minutes, each image and affirmation that you put on there flashes at the speed that reprograms that old negative belief system. So it's sort of like leaping into your life with a big anchor behind you. Your, your subconscious is the biggest resistance of, of your life, basically. And it's not even your, your beliefs. It's not even your actions and your thoughts. So why not update the software to tell it and to show it what it is that you want to express and create and share out to the world? Love it. Love it, Jennifer. Thank you so much for, uh, for being on the show. Thank you so much, Jeff. This is such a wonderful experience. And like I said, you can email me um, right there on my website. There's an area. So I want to be a resource for anyone who has any questions at all. My, my heart and soul is poured into helping everyone to remove all the old glunk that's, not, that's holding you back and bring you into alignment with your true passions and your true purpose. Love it. Love it. Thank you for uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day. Rise, fight, love, repeat. Get after it. And I'll talk to you soon. Woo! <laughs>Thank you for listening to the Morning Fire for Entrepreneurs podcast. You now have the knowledge, but without action, knowledge is useless. Choose to act. Choose to step into your greatness and unlock that hero inside of you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review so more entrepreneurs can hear this message. If you absolutely love this podcast, which I hope you do, then share it up with someone you know who might see benefit from it. Become that beacon of change and together we can impact the world.